just blew my mind at 12, 13 years old. And I just remember thinking to myself, wow, this guy is just the best guitarist I've ever heard. And you can totally tell it's, he has his own style. You can totally identify him because no one else plays like that. And just the impact of that really shaped my whole trajectory for life. I wanted to be a master musician like Edward Van Halen, even though it's a different instrument. Right. I wanted to have that mastery and to be able to have that kind of signature sound. I just have loved those first six albums. I'm just a huge disciple and I love it. I just love it. I went to Van Halen. My very first concert was 1980. Women and Children First, wow. which ironically the bass player was Talis uh, for Talis and <laughs> Billy Sheehan. <laughs> Who is oh now man, you with. saw that double bill? You have no idea how jealous Dave and I are. Yeah. Oh, that was 40 years ago at Oakland Coliseum. That was wow. my first rock concert. Unbelievable. And a, very, a great backstory to that. So I was about 13 in 1980, about the time. Maybe I just turned 14. And the concerts in Oakland, I lived in Santa Cruz, which is about 70 minutes away so that's a long way for me to go at 14 years old and it was a school night so all my friends like i had older friends that were going to go in the car and i asked my parents if i could go and they said no there's no way you have school whatever and so i ended up getting a ticket and i wrote my parents a note i snuck out and i said to them i said guys i know i'm going to get in a lot of trouble i'm at the van halen concert but i assure you all I want to do is just see my heroes play tonight. I will be home, and I'm willing to accept the consequences or whatever. So I go, <laughs> I go see Van Halen and see the wow. it was fucking amazing. And I remember getting home like around one in the morning, and my parents are waiting up, and they go, "You're grounded for the summer." I go, "I understand." Blah 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 blah. But finally, they they realize, you know what? We like that the kid was responsible enough to write the letter, yeah. and he didn't get into trouble, and he came home, and it was just music. So. I got on parole, I think, after like a week or whatever. Wow. It was worth it, though, man. Wow. <laughs> and then I saw Fair Warning oh. afterwards, and then I saw the last of that lineup I saw was Diver Down. Wow. And it kind of fell off a little bit for me. It jumped the shark a little bit because that's when it came out with Pretty Woman, and mm -hmm. things got a little goofy, a little bit goofy. You could see that the end was near. But then they picked it back up with 1984. I didn't see that tour. Just out of curiosity... With 1984, the introduction of keyboards, how did you feel about that being a keyboardist yourself? I didn't like it. I did not like it at all. Wow! I didn't want to hear him. I didn't want to hear him play keyboards, and it just all of a sudden shifted things. I like that album now, much later. I mean, after the fact, but at the time, I did not dig all those keyboards. Incredible! And how did you feel about 5150? I didn't like it. Wow. <laughs> That's interesting. I don't like. I, I don't like the post. And listen, I'm a, a fan of Sammy Hagar. I love him. I think he's very good. But to me, Van Halen is with David Lee Roth and Michael Anthony. Right now, obviously, when Sam was in the band, there were a lot more keyboard songs during that era. As a keyboard player yourself, what's your take on those songs? Well, I think it's it's great that Edward found inspiration. And was writing those hit songs. I mean, shit. He wrote, I mean, Jump, I'll Wait, and all of those songs with Hagar that are keyboard driven. I mean, that's amazing. I mean, I've never written a song that huge, and I'm a keyboard player my whole life. And so I've right. never, you know, he's covered a lot of ground as mm -hmm. a keyboard player besides the guitar. So, I mean, you got to look at that too. It's pretty right. amazing. Right. Absolutely. That's the truth. But as a fan, though, that wasn't the, what I wanted to hear from Edward. Now, in terms of your approach to the keyboards, how did you approach the keyboards? You play it so differently than any other keyboard player. I've seen you in concert. I mean, you play it almost the way Eddie does a solo with the same kind of zest and attack. Did you kind of pick that up from him? It's a fire. Yeah, it's in my DNA. It's, it's Edward Van Halen. Randy Rhodes, Ingve. It's just a certain spirit of the way that those guys attack their instruments. And I played a lot with Ingve. I didn't get to play with Randy. I was too young. But just listening to all those Van Halen records, there's a certain command of the instrument that you're able to just channel the fire gods. Absolutely. And you also masterfully performed Eruption on the keyboards, which was an incredible feat. 
How did you learn how to do that piece like that? I mean, it's really unbelievable. And were you nervous about trying it? No, uh, not really. But the first piece I learned was Spanish Fly, actually, oh, on okay. piano. That, to me, is more difficult to play than Eruption from a technical standpoint. What was the but reaction pieces, from the crowd? Oh, it's great. They, I mean, it's really cool and because I do my own thing. I start off with it, but then I climax the end of my synth solo, which is very guitar-based with my whole the whole Spanish fly routine. And then I also did parts of Eruption as well. Absolutely. Now, did you know Ed? No, I've only had the opportunity to meet and play with him one time and it was at the party at his house in 2006 the backyard party how did that come about oh, for the movie yes that he and did so what happened to- what, what happened was they were having a big party for the movie at the house and they hired a uh, friend's band the star effers who used to play on sunset strip we also had john karabi brian tishy on on drums and my friend is stefan adika on the bass and so he knew how big of a fan i was of ed and so he got me on the gig which i was totally excited about and so we went up to ed's house and we did one day of full rehearsal and then the next day was the uh the party and the show and it was just one of the surreal times of my life i just did a post on twitter of, of from that party and it was just like it was surreal playing with him. It was one of the dreams, you know, of the bucket list was to play with Edward Van Halen, and it actually happened that night. And he took me up to the studio at fifty one fifty, and it was just amazing. It was a great, great experience. I'm so glad I had the uh, chance to play with him. What was the rehearsal like? I mean, you show up at the house, <laughs> and what happens? It's just insane. There was just all these people like setting up the stage, and Ed was. Uh, it was really nice, and, and you know, oh, let's, let's jam, man, and and uh, it's really, it's a trip, even just thinking back of it. I remember after it happened, Brian Tishy was the drummer, and I remember calling up the next day, and I go, all right, let's do a debriefing. Let's see if, like, all of this really happened, and we were just going through all the different scenes of, of the party, and it, it was just an amazing, it was an amazing experience. And, and who got you the gig? Which guy? Stefan Adika, the bass player, wow. and the band was the Star Effers. What was the set list like, and how long was it? It was only like four songs. It was Jump, You Really Got Me, Ain't Talking About Love, and then he did Eruption. Okay. So now you got to play Jump with Eddie. Oh, yeah. It's on YouTube if you look it up. that's in- Yeah, I've, se- I've seen it. It's incredible. So now what was the party itself like? Well, it was crazy, and I think what it was was there was, it was a soundtrack for – some porn movie or whatever, some this director. Sacred Sin, was like yeah. A, mm-hmm. It was called the Sacred Sin Party. Right. It was the, the movie, and Edward did the score. Somehow, the, the release party was at his house. And right. So they, the band that was hired was the Star Effers. Wow. So that was my end. That's incredible. And, and it was just crazy. Yeah, it was like a Mardi Gras. It was That was my memory of it. It was like Mardi Gras up in the Hollywood Hills. And what, so what you were hanging out with yeah. Eddie Van Halen and porn stars. <laughs> it was it was amazing. It was crazy. <laughs> Dave watches that movie all the time, but just for the music. <laughs> it was and what was really amazing, guys, was that in that week, just four days earlier or five days earlier, my daughter was born, my first kid. Oh my and god! So, so it's like it's very dramatic events. Wow, that's insane. In my life. That's wow. a really, wow, 2006 is a big year for you. Now, that was just before he reunited with Roth. Did you see that on the horizon? Yes, because he played the videos of him and Wolf and Alex. It was just the three of them jamming, and he told us all about it. Really? <laughs> it like, oh, yeah. And, and he says, I'm getting back, and Roth's coming back in, but this is what's, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was just like, wow. Wow. You must felt like you were like, 16 again hearing that oh just amazing yeah now was wolf at the party no <laughs> no okay i don't think he was legal no. <laughs> yeah i don't think so well i figured if you're old enough to be in van halen well that's you're... 14 years ago how old is he he's like 29, 29. right yeah 
twenty nine. Yeah, yeah, so he was fifteen. No, he, he he'd be too young to be at that. Party. Yeah, but you know when you're in Van Halen at fifteen years old, it's like what's well, the Well, I don't think he was officially in yet at that okay, point. Okay, gotcha. That was pre gotcha. pre announcement. Okay, okay. And have you ever met Dave? I have not met him. Okay. And what about Sam? But no. you probably heard a lot of stories about him from Billy, well, yes. right? Consider, considering that I played with Billy, Greg Bissonette, and Steve Vai on all different occasions, <laughs> you know, I've heard a lot of rock stories. I can imagine. Now, do all their do all their stories jive? Do, do you get the do you get the same sense about David Lee Roth when you talk to all three of those guys? Absolutely. And what's that vibe you get? What do they say about Roth? Yeah, he's large. He's larger than life, and he. He uh, likes to run the show, and he's he's just a great entertainer. And all of them, everybody says great things about him. That's cool. That he was a good boss. Do you have any opinion about Roth's solo output? Did you ever follow that? Well, I love the Eat Him and Smile record uh, when it came out. I thought that that was great. When you go see Sons of Apollo, it's obviously clear that you guys are all Van Halen fans. I mean, you you guys have done... Uh, like a cover of In the Cradle of Rock, and you've done Eruption, and, and obviously Billy's in the band. So tell me, is that something you guys collectively share? Do you gotta jam on Van Halen tunes during soundcheck or anything? No, not really. I mean, if we are if we're playing it in the set, then, you know, like we did Cradle of Rock, but then the rest is just, I do it in my solo spot. I'll put in parts of Eruption and Spanish Fly and sometimes Mean Street or, or whatever. Sure. Sure. Yeah, that's excellent. Now, you have a brand new solo album, The Phoenix. What served as your main inspiration for this album, and what direction did you head in? The main inspiration was just working with Simon Phillips, mainly, on drums. He and I have done five records together, and he's been a huge drum hero of mine for uh, 40 years, wow, a long yeah. time. And so our formula is we just write, we cover a lot of ground from metal to fusion to progressive rock and everything in between and we usually will compose a record and then we add the guest stars to come in the bass players and the guitar players and we usually cast the songs according to the styles or if i'm writing with one of the guitar players like i did with kiko from megadeth we wrote a song and that ended up being on the record so it's just a lot of it depends on who i'm working with at the time You've also had the incredible good fortune to play with some really unbelievable guitar players. So I can, Sons of Apollo, you have uh, Bumblefoot. When you were in Dream Theater, you play with Johnny Petrucci. And in Black Country Communion, uh, you're playing with Joe Bonamassa. I mean, it's like unbelievable. Uh, you play with Steve Stevens when you play with Billy Idol. I mean, it's unbelievable. So Tony McAlpine. Me- yeah, Tony McAlpine. Yeah. Oh my, it's, it's just never ending. So what what's it been like playing with these unbelievable gunslingers? It's amazing. And I just recently did I had to do a top 10 list of my top 10 favorite and it was so difficult because my list goes so deep that the names that are left off of it, it's like wow, it's hard to leave these people off and don't want to insult anyone, but if I can name you my top ten, if you want to hear it, yeah, definitely, right off the list. Yeah. Oh, please. All right. Well, let's. In honor of Big Ed, we got to put him at the top. Right. Edward Van Halen. Uh huh. Steve Vai, Ingve Melstein, John Sykes, Michael Shanker, Alan Holdsworth, L.D. Miola, Steve Lukather, Joe Bonamassa. Wow, those are some really killer players there. Are Did you, I are say you... Zach Wild? Oh no, Zach you, Wild, I don't think you 10. said Zach. Zach's a monster. Oh my yeah. god. Forget about it. Yeah, he's it's tremendous, tremendous list. That's that's fantastic. Now, how would you say your solo material has grown from Planet X to Inertia to Black Utopia to Mythology to Blood of the Snake to Whimsical Molecular Intensity? Hanosity. Hanosity. I'm sorry, and to yeah. Oceana. How would you say it's grown over that period of time? I just think the writing is stronger, and my production and just my choice of sounds and notes and playing all together i just think it's maturing like a wine Mm. and it's just getting better and better but i'm not losing the fire and that's very important to me it's important to mature but you never want to lose that edge right that that fuck you-ness to the playing that Mm. we first heard on the first van halen record right always has to be coming through right exactly exactly now it's been nine years since your last solo album so why such a long break well, it was very tough to make solo records with the, all the illegal downloading and 
it just wasn't making any money at, at my level. And so I just had to take a little break from it and focus on other things. But about 18 months ago, two years ago, I just felt an urge to make another record. So I got a new deal and called Simon up and just started writing. Now, Dave and I are both big fans of Black Country Communion. It's another great band. And I wanted to ask you, what did you learn from your time with 